Hi there, welcome to my lightning talk. I'm Rob Pointer from Abley. Today I'm going to give you some quick insights into some of the fun I've been having integrating Esri with Autodesk's InfraWorks and creating cool scenes relatively easily. Yeah, in the past 3D scenes have been pretty clunky and slow. I'm sure we've all had plenty of experience waiting for scenes to render and then waiting again when we move the scene slightly. And even once it loads, there's always been a bit of compromise about how it looks, how it's shared, who can collaborate with it. But that past is now a distant memory, really. There have been a few significant developments, uh, most notably Esri and Autodesk announcing their partnership in 2017. I wasn't really familiar with much of Autodesk software. I dabbled in CAD, but found it quite difficult to jump into. It's complex interface and keyboard shortcuts and different tricks. So when I saw a colleague of mine getting into InfraWorks, I was keen to be involved in that because it looked far more intuitive for someone from an Esri background. But it soon became apparent that it was quite time consuming building scenes in InfraWorks. You'd start with a blank canvas and you'd have to add each feature individually. I thought it would be much faster to set up a scene with predetermined styles or symbology and then do all the design and drawing in an environment I was more familiar with, Esri. As you can see from this image, the attributes inputted determine the design elements in the 3D scene. So you can draw a stretch of road, for example, and assign it a hierarchy, in this case motorway, and the style rule on InfraWorks will visualize it as a divided four-lane highway. The same can be done with any attributes and visualizations you can think of. Tree species, building heights, roof materials, street lights, rubbish bins. So here's a video of how infrogration looks in practice. I can draw a simple line and it becomes a bridge. A building footprint becomes a building in 3D. This all saves on the time it takes to manually create new features in InfraWorks, delete the existing fence and create new ones. These changes occur in seconds. You can imagine a team of people working on Pro or Agol or Collector out in the field adding features and then seeing what they've added reflected in a 3D scene. InfraWorks also allows for publishing videos, particularly of fly-throughs. Fly-throughs are an easy way to share the finished results without having to share a bulky model with a client that may not have the software to view it. They are nicely loading. Gone are the days of seeing features flicker and load while you're recording the screen. It's a really nice addition to a project and I've found that people are more interested to get engaged with a visualization or video than something in a PDF. 3D visualization is moving more into the realm of video games and scenes are becoming even more realistic. You can see scenes during the day or night, rain or shine. There's also potential to run impact assessment on a new development where it will be viewed from and where the shadows may be cast. And again, fly-throughs offer us the ability to create videos from these scenes. While it's not quite Pixar or Weta Digital just yet, and you can see cars don't leave tire marks in the snow, these features that you're seeing are really just shapefiles drawn in Arc Pro. Um, you know, they only take a few minutes. So it's, it's quite impressive, really, when you think how much more texture and life can be added to your simple 2D sketches. So really, my take-home message is watch the space. There's going to be a lot of development in this area, and it's only going to become more powerful. And while these scenes are becoming more realistic, the lines between GIS and BIM, digital design, animation, they're becoming increasingly blurred. And while these scenes look great, and we can waste a bunch of time looking at pretty pictures, we must always remember to focus on what problem is this actually solving, and how can it be applied to projects in a practical way. So that's really all I've got to say at this stage. Um, if you've got any questions or feedback, please feel free to email me. I'd really appreciate hearing your ideas. Thanks a lot.